Metamaterial is the idea of designing properties into a material uh, to solve specific problems that you have. A metamaterial might also exhibit very specific conductivity properties or structural properties or might exhibit color properties. You can think of color as a meta property of materials that you know now. Uh, what's different now is that we can computationally design specific properties into our materials. So we're not just stuck with what we've been provided with by nature or what we typically manufacture into um, bulk products. You can now actually design these materials and you can express those materials in different ways. Uh, what we're doing is like uh, designing the material distribution and then you can have um, uh, to, pr uh, to produce a certain material that has a certain uh, uh, unusual, uh, unique behavior. Like the more glossy one is like hard material, the more matte one is like soft material. So basically you design how you uh, place where the soft material and the hard material. The other thing about it is like because it has this kind of uh, uniform deformation, so you can use that as, for example, design a certain valve or like a filter. You can basically um, apply this structure not only in two-dimensional way, but also in three-dimensional way, which means like when you press this, and then you can also see like its contract on the on the on the on the two to the other dimension. This is a well-known phenomenon in metamaterials, right? It's called a negative Poisson ratio, and the Poisson ratio is when you compress from one direction, usually it expands, right? Usually a material expands, but in this case, it actually is a uniform contraction on all sides. Um, and that's actually used in a number of different scenarios, like when you have impact, um, for example, but also like thermal expansion. So if a material is, is put under you know, in heat, and basically it expands uniformly, then that has a number of really, really good properties. Mm -hmm. 3D printing is like you really utilizing the power of computation because like you can really calculate what kind of uh, uh, specific uh, uh, transformation or geometry you want. So here we're entering the subtractive world. Um, and here you have a combination of subtractive and additive, 3D printing and traditional machining. But this is the swing arm. This is what attaches the rear wheel to the motorcycle frame. And the intent here is that we've 3D printed this. This is printed as one structure. So this is all one piece. And these are machined pieces. So these are machined in this device here out of aluminum. And this was printed in polycarbonate. And all of this is going to be wrapped in carbon fiber to make it one structural piece. All right, so what we've been investigating is how to, first of all, combine traditional CNC where we start with a solid block of material and carve it out with 3D printed material. Yeah. So you can see we've manufactured these, these little pockets here so the two can fit together. And then also figuring out how we get carbon fiber to bond to these materials. Because traditionally, this polycarbonate does not like to bond to most materials. It doesn't stick well. And this is where metamaterials or architected materials come in because he's made these little micro features on the surface to help improve the bond of the carbon to the material. Now here's another thing that we, it's coming out of a research project called Dreamcatcher, where this was an algorithmically ge generated structure. It kind of looks like bone marrow, actually. Everyone calls this the sushi roll. And this was algorithmically generated. This is a section out of here. So we're simulating what if we could generate this purely with an algorithm. So instead of this kind of structure, we have this optimized bone structure. And the team, what they're doing is they're defining the constraints. They're saying, here's where the wheel attaches, here's where the suspension attaches, and here's where the motor attaches. Here's the loads, grow the solution. And don't just grow one solution, grow 10,000 solutions and tell me which one is the best. Additive 3D printing opens up a whole new world where you can design the material. You can design forms that we could never make before. So all the engineers who have been classically trained have to unlearn their classical training. Right? We think in terms of features. We call these a hole and a rib and a pocket. These are all features and functions that are based upon how this machine works by carving out material. Now we're starting with nothing. All I know is the problem I'm trying to solve. How does that form evolve from there? And the big companies are trying to teach their engineers to forget what they've learned before and be more creative. 3D printing has also helped to democratize access to investigating metamaterials. What used to be only in the domain of research laboratories or large corporations, who had the, the laboratories and the factories and the machines to do this, now you know, people are able to build a machine to make a material 
to solve a specific problem that they may have. And that's what's changed now. And I think that's why this is a topic of conversation is because it's more accessible for you and I. You, you may have a specific problem that you need to solve that's unique to you and the tools are within your reach to actually approach that problem.